I don't know why they told you to stand for. I keep telling uh, Mr. Tule, don't do any introduction. So if he said you weren't going to do any introduction, but if found a way to slip, please stand here. And, and they'll pay for that. All right? So good morning, everyone. Once again, well, you're allowed to speak, I'm going to speak two times. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Of course, yeah, good morning. Uh, I'm really excited to be here. Uh, and I'm happy for what uh, Mr. Tula is doing, you know, through next move, best move, in light night, you know, uh, evolution, and just all of his other youth-driven activities, okay? Uh, he never stops thinking, and he never stops doing, okay? His passion to see young people empowered and enabled is really admirable, and uh, I draw strength from him most times. And I'm sure he knows it. He's, he's one of the people I can look to, you know, for counsel and guidance. Uh, so if you would do me some favor, please put your hands together for him again. He doesn't like that. <laughs> but let's come back. You know, and thank you so much for having me. Um, I was charged by those in charge to give the charge. <laughs> and so, and so that's what I'm about to do. And I don't, I don't plan to be up here long. To be really honest, every time I'm called to maybe speak to a group of people, I wing it. You know, I just stand and speak out of a place of passion, I speak out of a place of uh, what I feel. But I think it's a really critical time in our country. It's a really critical time in your lives. It's a really critical time in my life. So I decided not to wing it. I decided to write some things now that I will not just think about, but I will write it and tell you. It's up to you to do whatever you want to do with the information, okay? So just give me between seven and nine minutes of your time. I also would like to um, recognize all of those on the platform, uh, personally. Um, she not there? She not there? Yeah. No, I mean, like, like you here, but I mean her. <laughs> Is it Miss Gizzy? Yes, Gizzy. I would like to recognize her. Just thank you for all that you've been doing for young people and everything that you've been doing in the country. All of these uh, initiatives in our different areas will ripple together and, and, and cause the change that we want. So thank you for being here. Uh, I appreciate you. Um, it was really difficult coming up with something to say to you today. Why? Because we've been talking for far too long. And uh, it's been all talk and very less action. That's why when, when there is a place like this where there is action, I, I want to be there. Because we've been talking a lot. Um, but as, as, as in a time such as this, there is a need for dialogue. There is a need for conversation. There is a need for chats. There is a need for these type of engagements and discussions. And so if people will act in our country, people must talk in our country. They have to listen to what we want them to do. You have to listen to what we want you to do. And that's why I'm here talking, okay? So let me go through this thing that I wrote for you and, 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 and leave so you can dance and sing. Um, in a country such as ours, inspiring and motivating people is a bit more complex than we imagine or envision. On one hand, it could be really easy because there is so much to fix and so much to improve. And that in itself should inspire you to do something. Like if you just think about the issues, if we started to list the issues, that means this program will be for a week and we might not access the issues. On the other hand, it would be really difficult because these issues are systemic and overwhelming and people would rather accept the norms than attempt to fix or improve them. And so inspiring or motivating is not as easy as we think. It's really difficult. And it's a spectrum. It's either the problems inspire you or the problems scare you. Okay? Um, but I'll tell you, whether we are inspired or not, whether we do something or not, whether we move or stay stagnant, whether we decide to take action or not, 
Our problems aren't going anywhere. They're still there for us to fix. They're not going anywhere. It doesn't change. If you don't move, it doesn't change the fact that what you have is still a problem. Okay? Our history as a nation puts us in a driver's seat. And that's really interesting given the seat that we're in right now. And that is if we're still on the bus, by the way. You know, there's the driver's seat, there's the, the bucket seat, there's the, you know, the, the space for passengers, and there are just people that are outside that are not on the bus at home. I don't know where Liberia is right now, but our history puts us in the driver's seat, and let me remind you, uh, we've been a pound, pound year in Africa. Pound years for independence, you all know that. Uh, Pound years for democracy, pound years for the formulation of the African Union, uh, pound years for so much more. There was a time when Liberia was a hub for African travel and trade. Okay, there was a time when people came here to do trade. This was where the happening was happening. Okay, there was a time when flights transited in Liberia. If you had to travel through Africa, your flight had to land at RIA. And then you take connecting flights to Ghana or wherever, right? There was a time when, when JFK was one of the leading hospitals in West Africa. And people traveled from across West Africa to come here and get health care. There was a time when education in, in, in Liberia was a standard. I mean, I stand to be corrected, but I think Kwame Nkrumah even did crash courses in Liberia. If you know Kwame Nkrumah, if you don't like him, you just Google him. Like they came here and studied. Prominent people across Africa came here and studied. There was also a time when, when production was a way of life, okay? So, shoe factory, chicken soup factory, beer factory, battery factory, sugar factory, they were not just junctions or communities as we have now. Right now, if you hear battery factory, you just think about the junction, right? They were actually factories producing stuff in Liberia. Um, and they were boosting our economy and, of course, boosting our cross domestic product, which is our GDP. There were those times when Liberia was the place to be. There were those times when everybody wanted to be here. That's why a lot of times you hear a parent say, oh, normal days, you know? I mean, that, that term, normal this is debatable. But there was a time when you feel like everything was okay. Everything was stable. You know, we initiated a lot, a lot of policies, but that is history. That is history and that is the thing that puts us in the driver's seat. What does our present day look like? I don't have to tell you, but it is completely opposite to what our history looks like. In Liberia today, one in every two adults are functionally illiterate. One in every two young people are functionally illiterate. Seven out of ten of our school going age children are out of school. One out of two people live in absolute poverty. Eight out of ten people are vulnerably employed or unemployed. Okay, our GDP per capita, I think, is, is six hundred and eleven dollars now. Only twenty percent of students who start grade one make it to grade twelve. The country's population is seventy percent young people. Eighty-five percent of that number is unemployed. That is a crisis waiting to happen, okay? We have one in every three children under the age of five that are stunted in terms of growth. I don't want to talk about the rape culture that COVID-19, you know, really exposed. It was already there, but COVID-19 exposed the rape culture in Liberia. And I don't want to continue down a list of problems because we will not leave from here. However, to me, this is not the biggest issue. The biggest issue, in my opinion, is that we have found a way to dance in the dysfunction. And a nation that dances in the dysfunction never improves. 
Designated dysfunction means accepting the brokenness of the system instead of doing something about it. It means exploiting the issues of the country instead of fixing those issues. It means finding ways to survive in an unhealthy system instead of doing all we can to improve the health and vitality of the system. A lot of times we just decide, okay, I can't do much about this. So let me just live with it. So if I have to go to the bank after 2 o'clock and I have to give a bribe to the security so I can enter, I'm not the only one doing it, right? So let me just do it because this is how our system works. That is where Liberia is right now. We're dancing in a dysfunction. We're finding ways to live with all of these problems instead of dedicating our efforts to fixing these problems. That is at the very core of all of our issues, but we can no longer do that. We can no longer allow ourselves to be satisfied with mediocrity or average. We can no longer sit back, fold our hands, and wait for saviors to come. To push up, oh, no savior is coming. You are the ones we're depending on. We must demand more. We must do more. We must be bold. We must be courageous as we step into an era of our lives where we examine our realities, explore the options available to us, and execute the interventions that we design. Okay? How does this concern you? I'll tell you why. You have the opportunity to redefine our realities. As young people, you have that opportunity. You have the opportunity to rewrite the narratives. You have the opportunity to retell our stories. It may be difficult, and a lot of times the problems are so overwhelming, you ask yourself, how can I start? How can I start? Like, what do I do? How do I fix that? How do I fix this? Everything around me is a problem. Where do I start? I'll tell you four ways that you can start. Like, if you do these four things, it's going to put you on the path to improving our education system, improving the systems that we have. Just improving, period. Okay? So if you have your, your pen and your notepads, take note. Number one, I urge you to focus on your education and learn. I never said focus on school. School is a form of education, but school is not entirely education. Okay? Focus on your education and learn. Education transcends the boundaries or the four walls of a school building. Fall in love with the pursuit of knowledge and excellence. Be curious. A critical thinker asks questions and seeks knowledge. You cannot be satisfied with Archimedes principles, Boy's law, quadratic equations, Newton's third law of motion. I can tell the last time I used quadratic equation in my life. I've been out of high school more than a decade. Okay, then there is more actually and we must be able to search for more. We cannot be more informed in the age of information. Knowledge and excellence must be the order of the day for you. And while you are at it, you must learn to validate the information that you get. Because the world is also full of misinformation. Not everything you see is true, especially on social media. Not everything you see is true, you must validate your information. That is what a critical thinker does. Fall in love with the pursuit of knowledge and excellence and love education. You cannot fix what you don't know. You cannot fix what you don't know, so you must be educated. Going to school is one of the ways of being educated. But if you know our education system, you know that you have to go beyond that. Okay? Number two. Cultivate values. You are all smart, you know, and you can all school the best of grades. If you decided to tap the class, you guys can compete, and you all maybe, you know, just school the, you know, the amazing grades. But you have to distinguish yourself by being values driven, because not everybody has values. Actually, everybody has values, but not everybody has. So cultivate good values, okay? 
Distinguish yourself by being humble, by being kind, by being honest in a world where we're so dishonest, by being compassionate, and by being selfless. And there's many more. By having integrity, the ones that you guys like. It is one thing to be a leader, and it's a whole different thing to be a values driven leader. And I must tell you, Africa needs more values driven leaders. Liberia needs more values driven leaders. There is a gap in leadership, and that gap is value to me. So, cultivate values in addition to the education that you have or that you're chasing. Number three, engage in small or radical acts. Your contributions to the society does not have to be massive. It does not have to be large. It does not have to affect the 5.2 million people that we now are. Start small anyway. Do something. You cannot be idle in a space like Liberia. Pick a cause and fight for it. Pick a cause and go all out for it. Young women, there are a lot of things plaguing young women in our country. Pick one. How can you ensure that young women are not exposed to addiction of drugs? Let that one be on your heart and run with it for the rest of your life. How can you ensure that young women have access to, to uh, menstrual health education? Maybe reusable pads for those who can't afford it. Pick a course and fight for it because you cannot be idle in a space like Liberia. It could be education, it could be health, it could be security, it could be finance, youth development, anything that you're passionate about. You cannot do everything, but you can pick one and do it the best way. Indecisions in a space like ours don't work. In fact, indecision is a decision not to make a decision. Finally, be consistent. It is easy to be inspired. It is more difficult to stay inspired. Keep at it. Don't stop. You can rest, but don't stop. I know a lot of us will leave from here with that energy, with that sense. By the, by the time you're done hearing all of these people speak, you know, because I know most of them, you're, you're fired up. You want to do stuff. You want to change the world. You want to go out there and just do everything. But when you step out into the real world, then it's, it's, it's more difficult to keep that inspiration. So I'll just ask quickly, three people across the room, and I'll point to you maybe because people barely volunteer nowadays. Tell me your favorite animal. Three people. You. What's your favorite animal? Please then. Yes. Dog. Dog? Why? Dog keeps you safe from danger. Is that a characteristic you think you have? You, you like to keep people safe from danger? All right, thank you. You? Yeah, I like glasses. Tell me your, your favorite animal. Please, then. Come again. Rabbit? What? They're cute and kind. And, and are you kind? We don't have to talk about food because we see you. All right, thank you. You? Yes. Your favorite animal? Cat. Cat. Why? Uh, innocent. Huh? Innocent and likes cuddling. It likes cuddling. Huh? Yeah. Wow. That's interesting. All right, thank you. So I'll take three guys. You? Your favorite animal? Lion. Lion? Of course. Why? It's fearless. It has leadership abilities. It's fearless. It has leadership abilities. And you think you have those? 
All right. Uh, with a headphone. Yes. Your favorite animal. You ready to about it? You tell me. Okay. You in front. Yes. Your favorite animal. Lion. Okay. Why? Fearless, overprotective leadership. One more guy. You in the back. Your favorite animal. Yes. Lion? Okay, why? It's brave, it's courageous, it's fast, and you believe you have those kind of business. Thank you. Okay, please put your hands together for the people who. So I asked six people in this room to tell me their favorite animal. Right? And they all told me their favorite animal. And I wrote exactly the animals that people were going to select. I didn't have all of them. I didn't even think about rabbit because of cuddling and all that. But I know I had lion, I know I had tiger, I know I had dog. I know one animal that nobody was going to select. Huh? Yeah. Was the turtle. I think nobody likes turtle. Why? Those turtles are really slow. Right? Turtles are really slow and, and, and nobody wants to be slow. And that is why my point of being consistent is my final point because turtle may be slow, but turtles are some of the most consistent animals you've ever seen. It may not be skillful, it may not be fast, but if there is a goal, no matter how long it takes, the turtle will get there. If there is a race of lions and, and tigers and, and rabbits and turtles, the lion may win the race. The tigers may sprint ahead. Rabbits may hop to the, to the lion. But as slow as the turtle can be, the turtle must get to the finish line. And that is what consistency means for you. That is how important it is to stay consistent. Because going fast does not necessarily mean you'll get there. But going consistently means you'll get there. Going fast, you could, you could meet a lot of challenges. You can see a lot of hindrances. This may sound, sound cliche, but this is the truth. But if you go consistently, you will find a way around it. The turtle is more in the journey than the destination. That is what consistency is, and that is how you go if you stay consistent. Keep at it and never give up because if you give up, that's one less person to fix all of the things that we have to fix. And I don't think Liberia can afford that right now. We need you. So the four lessons are focus on your education and learn. What's the second one? Cultivate values. The third one, small but radical acts. And the last one, stay consistent. Never stop trying. Remodel yourself. Redefine yourself. Try and find ways around it. But never stop. Because if you stop, then we lose one person to fix all of these things that we have to fix. Thank you so much for having me.